Hoffman and Mitch. Yeah. I mean, the injured bear on the field is Akeem Hicks. Cousins loses the football. Strip sack and take away. Bears are alive. Come on, Bears are alive. We go all live right after Bears get, get games. With your boys draft talk in the smartest man alive. Yo. Bears are alive. Bears are alive. We're going live. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys trap talk and the smartest men alive. Bring it up with a true analysis. You expect raw passion for the show. Bears fans get nothing left. Locked in with real emotion and passion for every play. Go to bring that range. But then with facts, my shame. Post game show like nothing else you're gonna hear. Some can try to copy, but a bucket's not sincere. Delivering the truth on what just happened to be clear. That's why we're on TV so you can see it, not just here. You can tell the shit matters. The bill love can be felt. Critical of Nagy because the talent he's been dealt. Our life keeps growing. Shane's all knowing. Delivering the truth on how the QB's throwing. Dimes on time are just lacking fundamental. Whatever the case, we get hot like Cecil. Fiery discussions on what happened in the game. This ain't your daddy's post game. Don't expect the fucking flame. Not for the average fan of all things. Survive. But don't you worry. Bears our live. Bears our live. Bears our live. We go on live right after Bears games with their boys trap the talk and the smartest the men alive. The Bears our live. Dr. Phil. Bears our live. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys trap talk and the smartest men alive. Bears our live. Bears our live. The Tape Never Lies Network. This is Bears Hour Live. Hey, Bears fans. We finally saw some uh, third quarter, second half adjustments where the Bears came out and looked motivated to play. Phil and I were... uh, all doom and gloom and negative at halftime, but the Bears came out and and really did what they needed to do down in Jacksonville. They they stepped up on defense. I know it's still the Jaguars, but they they came out and put it on Jacksonville to make their statement to head in to Week 17 with the showdown, Green Bay in Chicago playoffs potentially on the line because they can still technically get in with a loss next week. But um, this is what we wanted. This football team needed to go down to Jacksonville and come out not with a a one-point victory. They needed to go down there, make a statement. We got to see that with the second half. So we got Claudio back in the fold with us today. So that's another win right there for us. But uh, we're going to turn this over to Draft Dr. Phil for another uh, opening rant, W style, after a big W down in Jacksonville. So take it away, Phil. What's up? I'm waiting on Claudio to do his <laughs> job. I can't hear anything, Claude, because you didn't add it to the stream. There we go. There we go. Little technical difficulties here as we hit the edge of 2020. God, what a year. What a year to be a Bears fan on top of the year that we've had. And you couldn't ask for a game to be, you know, unveiling the truth of football. Football's a fickle game. As I said last night, the definition of who you are is a litmus test when your destiny is given back to you because you fumbled it away and you've lost six games in a row because you wanted to be the arrogant son of a bitch and pull (laughs) your fucking quarterback out. You had your choice. You had your choice. And you went with Nick Foles, who, by the way, gets in the game and throws a curl six yards behind the receiver. This is the definition of what this team is based on the head coach. You are supposed to go out there. So if somebody wants rah-rah and pom-poms on this network, then you're not going to get that. You might as well go fuck into another network. The reality is you did what you were supposed to do. You beat a team that you're far superior to. 
and you did it in a fashion with which unveils, like I said, the true identity of this head coach. He can't get out of his own way. You define momentum by running the football. I've shown you this how many times, how many weeks on the tape? Every week. Number 32 is your identity. Mitch is the assist. He's the point guard. He's not Michael Jordan. He's BJ Armstrong. Just give the fucking ball to the playmakers. That's your job as a quarterback. That's what a coach has to understand. You want reality? I want Super Bowls. I want a team that's built on the very foundation of identity and smash mouth football is the penicillin to get you there. The Kansas City Chiefs, the New England Patriots, and every Super Bowl winner beforehand found their identity through the run game. Everything else functions around that where other blog boys and everybody else is gonna tell you a different story of what's convenient, a narrative on Robert Quinn, on Khalil Mack, on Roquan Smith, on safeties, on corners, on offensive line. We got the fucking best center in the fucking league, according to some people studying. We don't! What we have is a big clusterfuck of not knowing how to use your personnel appropriately. There's a time and a place to run that wheel route and hit Cole Komet. It's not with J.P. Holtz blocking for you. That gets your quarterback killed. That's the stuff, the little details and fundamentals. If you learned anything on this network, every play matters. Doesn't matter to the blog boy or the ESPN announcer on a Monday morning. It doesn't, they don't give a fuck. They want the stat and the score. That's it. But I want a fucking foundation, a dynasty, an improvement, an expectation. When you go into Disney World, you expect to pay and get what you pay for. When you go to the Chicago Bears, you want to see a team that is defined each and every play by an attitude by a detail, by an emotion, not jet sweep at the fucking one with a tight end! Who does that? You wanna lose games? Do that shit! Laugh it off! You fucking clown! Get in the shotgun, throw empty! You ain't playing Green Bay! You're playing the Jags, who by the way, are 32nd in the fucking league! They've lost 14 straight! You want Bob Pops? You want cheerleaders? Get the fuck out of here! That's the fucking expectation. It's real. It's raw. I live it inside my heart. I would go out there. We would beat this team 50 to fucking nothing. And then I'd be pulling people out. And you know what? It might mean nothing to you, but it means something to me. When I go fucking and I'm fine with the Wildcat. Because you got your best player on offense holding the ball. But when he gives and they get 23 yards with Pierce, the next play, I'm giving it to 32. Because he's the guy. He's the one. That's what you define family with. I loved you, bro. I got you because you got us. That's coaching. Guess what? Let's give it to Arterius Pierce. He's worked really hard on the practice squad. That's the opposite of how you enlighten your team. Yes, it's a win. I don't even know what the comments are in the chat. We got people probably, well, they won. They won. They killed them. We want better. How do you learn from your mistakes? This coach can't get out of his way. That, Shane, is my rant. Jesus. You're on mute, but I'm exhausted. We can't hear you. Talk now. Can you hear him? <laughs> we can't. Yeah, I, I have no yeah. idea. Somebody muted my mic on that oh, end. I, I don't know. I my mic. You were. No, you I muted me. Mute you. <laughs> you. Yeah, I said, "Are we going to Disney World?" I thought you were going with a Mickey Mouse reference. There. Oh my God! I I 
I've never seen anything like it, man. It is Disney World. Every fucking possession is like the fucking haunted mansion at Disney World. You don't know what you're going to get. There's no definition. There's no definition. And 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 really, ultimately, people could say whatever. It's a win. It's a win. I get, I get it, too. But you know what? You want to fucking be a championship? You right. want to win championships? There is no fucking... Uh, there is me on the horn. You throw this ball away. You have... You, yeah. I want to throw. You throw this ball away. There's no interception in the end zone. There's no miss on Cole Komet. Yeah, you can disagree with the play call and the play design and all that, but you can't compound it by throwing a, a bad ball. Chris Gonzalez and I were chatting about this a little bit via text during the game, and he didn't like the play call. I understand that, but you can't make it worse by making a mind-numbingly dumb throw in the end zone because guess what? You do that next week against Green Bay, it's going to be a factor in the game. You're not playing Jacksonville next week. Exactly. This is the 32nd team. The expectation, obviously, any given Sunday, something could happen. Obviously, you see, fucking the Jets are beating the, the Cleveland Browns. You saw the Jets beat the Rams. They don't have any wide receivers. Every one of their wideouts is on COVID protocol. Cleveland, every one of them. Except for Marvin Hall, who they just uh Former Bear. Up. Yeah. Parky hit the upright. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But Shane, listen, I thought Mitch played a good game. I felt like the coach didn't help him. And again, where I gonna look at that throw, that was dumb. Other than that, I thought he played good. He's gotta hit the but that's throw on the wheel route. Phil, that's the thing. That's the thing right there. And I mean, just I'll put things out on Twitter. You'll put things out on Facebook and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Just because we hold Mitch accountable for missing Komet on that wheel route, that's where people overreact and they don't understand what we do here. We're going to hold him accountable for things like that. It doesn't mean that we're saying that he sucks and and he he has no future and no ability. We're not saying that. We're gonna we're not gonna blow sunshine and rainbows up your ass when he misses a fucking layup there, as far as I'm concerned. And we've seen that time and time again. Did Mitch play good today? Yeah, I thought he played good. But did he make Mitch mistakes that we've seen over and over again? Like that that fucking interception to me is unacceptable. You're in year four. I totally understand. You can, like Gonzalez was bagging on the plate. Is I get all that. Year four, throw the fucking ball away. Live another down. It's simple. That's that should be the mindset. This is this is what hurts Mitch. You gotta. There's no accountability. I'm Everybody nowhere. To have a fucking parade. But the reality is. You want real talk? I'm not. This isn't. What did this dude say this week? Like it's a, it's a, a skit. What was the term he used about Leno? That it's become a. Oh, your shtick. A shtick. Thank you. A shtick. There's no shtick on this exactly. motherfucking network. At the old network, I could tell you right now, this guy had a lot of shticks, just yeah. to be the contrarian. That's not my game. I refuse to be a part of that. There is no fucking script. There's no shtick. Whatever I see that's fucking funny or agitates me, I'm going to fucking point it out where it matters most on the tape. And you get some fucking crazy fucking lunatics out there that oh, yeah. can't understand how to analyze tape or film or flip-flop or do whatever the hell. I don't do that. My word is my bond. I, we all fuck up. I messed up in my life. I'm not <laughs> I'm not ever saying that. But what I'm not doing now is having a shtick. My emotion after this game is frustration because I know the personnel on this football team was a 10-win football team, and you have the ability to be better than that, and you saw it get worse. And then you put Mitch back in and you start running David Montgomery, who 
Bryant Gumble or whatever. Greg Gumble's just found out who he is. And that's a problem on the head coach that people don't know who David Montgomery is. It is the reality. It is the reality of your identity is 32. He's the guy that's going to save Matt Nagy's job. And Mitch Trubisky is the guy that's going to help save the job with him. It's ironic, as I said, that I the agree. guy bench these two and gives a fuck. Well, he didn't bench Montgomery, but doesn't use him appropriate. Let's be honest. Let's not forget if Cordero Patterson was ready, he would have gotten carried well, there too. It's like Phil, people but, have to get injured in order for this to exactly. Happen. Give Claudio some credit. When we came in right after the game was over, Claudio brought it up, and it's a it's an absolutely valid point. I tweeted out. When the Bears, you know, scored their their forty first point, I'm like, all right, as fun as it is to fucking put one on to another team, it's time to start pulling these guys out oh that are your key contributors next week. But then you're seeing you're see you're you're giving fucking David Montgomery meaningless carries there at the end of the fucking game when you have a guy like Pierce, you have a guy like No. That's when they should be getting the burn. You imagine you imagine heading into week seventeen and you're gonna lose your fucking bread and butter in a fucking blowout that that's that's what happens when you're staring into your fucking playbook all game and you have no clue about what's going on around you i said this to andrew brown on facebook i go no now he's not gonna get a thousand because now yeah. you gotta pull him out the point of the game was after the wildcat give it to david he fucking goes in scores you pull him out that's it exactly adam it was coaching malpractice to have David out there because he's the reason why the exactly. action game is working. He is the reason. Listen to what listen to what uh, a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Now I'm not a big Rich Gannon fan in terms of the way that he handles a, a broadcast, but listen to the way that he was talking about David Montgomery in the aggression that he yeah. runs with, the hands that he has, the vision that he has. I mean, there's Phil. There's people that we used to work with that was questioning. David Montgomery's fucking vision as a running back, questioning his feet of all fucking things. Bro, the, the, he's got elite feet. Place. Exactly. The reality is, it pisses me off. Like, I look back at things and people, and it's okay, people will repeat what I say and they'll bring it to me like it's new to me. And I'm like, I've been saying this for weeks. So you have to have that line of class. But when you're working with someone professionally and you're doing all the film study and breakdown and analysis, and they're going against you saying, no, this guy sucks. He's got no vision. He can't see the hole. And I'm like, there is no fucking hole because they're not wanting to run the ball. They don't block assignments correctly. Um, this week we had X is with the O's on the patron channel with my father. We took five plays and we broke it down. And PFF is giving Leno this high standard grade. And on all five plays, he fucked up. Do you think that would happen with a real offensive line coach grading these guys? No, it becomes a narrative. And then people come after our network because we have a shtick to uplift. No. No, I'm going to point out Charles Leno doing a great fucking job. If he turned his fucking ass and gets up in there and he's aggressive, I'm going to fucking praise that. But he's soft as puppy shit. And that is how I would fucking confront him. If he ever came on this network like PFF, PFF doesn't know shit. Exactly, Demetri. I would say, Charles, you're graded high in PFF, but on TTNL, you are graded an F. Why? Why aren't you? And that's the difference. That's where we're selling point is. You could call it, oh, you guys are fuck arrogant. You're whatever. I'm just speaking the fucking truth. And if it bothers you, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to talk over the coach. That's what we do on this show. We're going to talk <laughs> over him when he comes on the air and respond to his stupidity. And it's the fucking new. It's Christmas. It's the new year. You spanked the Jags, the worst team in the league. You fucking should. You did your job. You did now. your job. Exactly. You if did your you job. If you really had a head coach, McCaskey, you would have been in the playoffs today because you yeah. would have beat Detroit had you had, hey, I have an identity. I run the ball. And when we're down 
or we're up three, I'm going to get 32 to close out the motherfucking game, not 10 dropping back. Let's not fucking rewrite history here. This is the reality of what we're dealing with. It, it goes by the wayside with this recency bias. It drives me insane. Like, this isn't fanboy show. This is not fanboy show. This is the fucking X's and O's show. I'm pissed off because you beat someone you should beat. And the thing that's triggered me is the first and goal at the one. Yeah. And you're running fucking cutesy, tootsy, my little pony fucking reverse with the tight end. That right there gets me going for the whole day. For the whole day, it's going to bother me. Should have been 14 to 3 there. And then instead, you're 10 you're 10. Right. It's a whole fucking game. That's can't do that. Ball. Phil, you can't do that next week. Oh, can't. Really can't. Don't. I know. I know. Bad habits don't go away, Claudio. What do you say? Fix. You can't fix stupid. Yeah, the right? Bears blog was out there defending it by putting it onto the, onto the fans, and that's this is the shit that we're gonna call out. So uh, you can be a big the blog fan. The guy's a, the guy's a fucking fraud. But anyways, he was out there saying that oh, all you fans loved the fucking plays to the tight end when he was handing off to fucking Trey Burton. No, we didn't. We didn't love that, dumbass. No, if if you're a fucking meathead and you want to look at that and say oh that was cool, good for you. Don't watch our network. We're not that way. We're going to fucking call out a ridiculous play call that Phil, again, you can't, that will, you can survive that against a team like Jacksonville, you know, but, but at the same time that took you from potentially 14 to three to 10, 10, because the, the bears defense, there's a lot of questions. You have to fucking let these guys go. If you're going to fucking pay thoroughbreds to fucking run around and make plays. Yes. Remember Chuck Pagano at the beginning of the year when he said, yeah, we're going to get our guys going this way, not that way. But then the fucking first third down of the game, you see fucking Robert Quinn covering Tyler Eifert on third fucking down. And then you saw it again after that, and he gave up another third down. It's To me, Chuck Pagano is on an equal level with coaching malpractice as Matt Nagy for the simple fact that your fucking money, your war chest is on the fucking defensive side of the ball. You have Khalil Mack. You have Akeem Hicks, who's fucking loafing just about every fucking down now. You have Roquan Smith, Kyle Fuller, all these fucking guys. I'm not going to name Eddie Jackson because that dude's fucking regressing. I'd rather put DHC in there at this point. Just keeping it real. But you have the fucking... You have the war chest on fucking defense. All the money is there. And you're fucking doing everything that you shouldn't be doing. Second and six, you're back. Here's here's Coach Nagy. Let me me do it for Claudio here. Where is it? Where is he? There he is. Can't hear him. Could you? No. Can't hear him, Claude. For, For, you know... Our offense being up, doing rebound back from you know those two possessions in the red zone. Special teams keeping that field position. Uh, Some, you know, the DeAndre first Carter fucking making question a tough should play, be: you know, to come back Why Cairo doing his, Not Montgomery at first and goal. In these type of games, just proud There's of our players tree for understanding speak. where Brad Biggs will talk about the defense with this question. You know, what's Watch ahead of us. All right. and, Brad and so uh, we've talked about it all week long. Our guys is responded. The one yard they play. listened. And they're uh, they're coachable, and you love that as a as a coach. First up, uh, Jason Leisure. Come on, Leisure, don't let me down. Now you've had some tough days this season. Now you have this big game against Green Bay. Uh, how much better do you feel about the way things are going than you did the first time going into Lambeau? What is he gonna say there? Sure, exactly. yeah. I mean, it's uh, oh, where we're at right now up. as a team. It's it's, it's Leisure, definitely different. Minus um, five. Is a, a hell of a football team, and and uh, there's a reason why they're sitting right now as the number one seed. So, uh, you know, for us, we got to worry about us. We got to understand. Uh, what happened in that game, and then we, we we know that we're guaranteed one more game. We nothing else, and if we do well in that one game, then we'll have an opportunity for more. But we can't worry about Soft that. We just we question. just worry about That's us. Right. Shit I, I have a question for you about DeAndre Carter too. You mentioned that 
uh, you appeared leisure just jumped back in about that play. What were you? That's the first time I've seen you upset. You should have been pissed off at your play call. Well, at the goal you know, line. when that goes yeah. on, um, you, you always are going to protect your guys. And when, you know, he's a, he's a warrior and he made that, that catch and, and run. And then, you know, he, it was a vicious hit and nothing against the kid that hit him. But, um, when you're, if when no you're one down asked there, about you know, the tight ends in that game, uh, you want to make sure that I guys swear to God, I will at, go. At the initial time, oh, there wasn't a flag, and then you know, there ended up one coming. And those referees have a hard job, you know. And there was one right before that that wasn't nearly as, as bad, in my opinion. But again, they called it, and it was a good call by them. So, um, in that situation, I just I just want to make sure so, that Jason Leisure, okay, number minus one. 10 yards and number on two, his questions because um, he had know, a negative five called, on the first did, dumb ass question. question for that. And, and, and they, then they did a great, this the one, did a great job looking at that. JJ. Let's see. I texted JJ, please. Chat Matt, sweet. In, in the third quarter, you kind of start out with that RPO, get that early completion. Then you go for it on that fourth down. Um, were you just feeling like the offense is in a bit of a rhythm at that point when you got to that fourth down and, and that kind of led to that decision? Yeah, we we knew playing um, the jack, you know, in that in that position right there. Come on, it's a uh, it's a longer. Uh, uh, I you guarantee know, they fucking told him, Don't ask about and, the tight end uh, trick. The field goal and there's just so many things. There's that, no that way you don't ask that first. I if think you're also doing it your shows job in a blowout, players making plays at crucial times, and our guys did that. Come and, on, uh, that that's that's important. You know, you, you have guys that that understand that you're going to put the ball. We get rid of fucking Jake Holt and fucking just my opinion. John Jenkins in at fullback for God's sake. Dan Weederer. Ask the fucking question. Matt, as you probably know, the uh, third quarter has not been uh, your strong suit this year. What jump starts against fucking that, last place uh, Jack? Third quarter, and also as you go into week seventeen, what gives you the most juice about about where you guys are at right now? I would say the third quarter thing. I'll be I'll be completely honest with everybody on this call. I have no idea. We've studied it. We've looked at it. It's just it's crazy. This the amount of struggle yeah. we've had in that third quarter. So there I don't know. I, I don't know when I'll know. But shitty question uh, number I, four. To play well today in the third quarter. Uh, uh, part of it is going to be, uh, yeah. I think when the season ends, you go back. You say, okay, how, how many possessions how are they get not the ball to asking start the third quarter this. versus um, a, a team that gets the ball uh, to start the third? You have less possession. Uh, and then also, are you getting three and outs on defense? To, Where's to the clown pick? So, Jesus and then are you Christ. being productive on offense? And today we we did Fishu, all we were able to be productive on offense. We Fishu. scored touchdowns. And our defense got stops and got the ball back. So you put all that together, and it someone needs to. And that happens. Photoshop. Be and sure. What was, your, uh, what was the next one? Yeah, as far as just going into week seventeen. Yeah. Right now, what gives you the most juice about where you guys are at? Well, you know, it gives them the uh, most. You win three in a row. You feel good about scoring points. I mean, our our offense uh, scoring points right now. You putting gave up touchdowns, and we even no. had a couple right in the red zone that. Uh, you look back and and you realize, okay, man, we could have we could have maybe, maybe had even more. And, since you've given so, up play um, call, but I thought for the most part they did a good job. You're averaging of, of, thirty uh, of, of scoring points a game, and then so you start you start winning. You get out of that losing streak that we had. So uh, on the had broadcast, for the last three weeks and about where we're Cannon going and what we're doing this together. Guy. Um, and they've, they've giving up play calling and discredit goes to all the, the players when he came and here the coaches and to be the offense and they put us now in a situation Doing, where it could have went by the a way, different direction and it the has Gary it. Kubiak now, offense, you know, offense not and, the Matt Nagy. Um, you know, this right. isn't the as we this isn't last week, we what Kansas City runs in this Philly. Team. They're a good football team tell you, and they play hard. What I've said, their record, all that Mitch does well. And someone stepped in there and said, We got to fucking do it. I don't believe it was this guy. Kevin Fishpan listening to this motherfucker. Hey Matt, what, what was uh, the message to Mitch at halftime? What were your conversations? Who was and asking this question for real? About what he did then in the third quarter. Next play mentality. That's it. Can you That's imagine, like, literally even in the about. high school, a high school Next game? Play. Are you are you upset <laughs> or angry about it? Yeah, we all are. But you know what? Tight end reverse on. on the Don't one yard line on first and goal. We go in at halftime. We figure They're out. They're asking the head coach about that. Points Very first, even if they going. blow them out. That's exactly what, what you he think did. So uh, again, it's it's um, he's 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 doing a lot of great things, and he's he's helping us out offensively. And there's a lot of confidence right now, uh, uh, collectively. Look at on Pat Finley. Come on, Finley. Hey, Matt, uh, the performance from A-Rob today, where does that rank uh, among the games that you've been with him? He's seen We're ranking uh, performance in particularly getting you now. first downs as often as he did. Yeah, it was big. Guess um, what? They fucking ran like slants. 
That's he why ends up making plays on crucial Finally. third downs and RPO you know, um, plant for him to have a hundred catches uh, here against his his former team. Are we um, kidding? It's just it's it's pretty cool. But you get to a point where you realize a player like him that that makes these plays and and Thank does you, this Chicago well Bears six five out. four. Um, it, it's just the confidence keeps growing with these guys. And uh, I don't even know what the question was. It was so fucking dumb. Brad Biggs. Somebody. Hey, Matt, uh, along Steve with Matt. the success you guys have been able to have here in the third quarter a, a little bit recently, opening drive of the game, it seems like you guys have been better at that as well. Is that kind of getting <laughs> dialed in with the, the first 15 that, that uh, you, I'm sure you and Bill kind of do collectively? And then How? I had a second question. I was just wondering <laughs> on the Cole Komet run. Are you, are you trying uh, to catch him off balance there? Or he's trying to hide what's it. What's the thinking behind the play? I'm sure you guys would like that. That should have yeah, been your only Yeah, you know what? Question. So I'll start with the the, the first question. Um, the Colts well, game? In, in regards to Cole, I'll, I'll go to, to Cole. The, in the game right there, he's you know, back. you're like, he's uh, uncomfortable you're in a position that. where you got the ball at the one-yard line. And that play – um, really look good all week in practice, and that's we a all, fucking I mean, problem. It there, looks good in techmo. Uh, probably knew that 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 was coming, and uh, we all felt it. And I they I they got him to jump. They, well, we didn't get him, but they they jumped off sides, I think, and then they ended up giving a different look. Credit to them. Oh, and uh, yeah, if there's so if there's a play where as a non-play as, as, as the non-play caller because he turned it over to Laser, he should be. Referring to Bill Lazor for that that call, right? So that tells you all you need to know. Our guys are done. They they, they came back from that. What was the first question? Go ahead, Brad. (laughs) What was the first question? Did you happen to watch the Colts? The the, uh, opening drive, a little more dialed in with that. The squeeze, Brad, calls early. What what goes into that? that. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, for the number one, the the players, right? No matter what plays are running tight in reverse when they're on the that, one yard, long, you can't even make um, that shit up if you try to being able to execute, right? And I just think that right now oh our players. God. I right, told Adam to Rank, I'm like, come on, Adam, you can't even fucking games, defend really that shit. Feeling good and not even a fantasy league. You know, every play that is called, and so my son um, wouldn't even run that play on Madden. As a as a staff, and you'd ground him. Through, I'd ground my <laughs> son if he called that. that. I, was getting I would to, smack him right in the ass. I swear to through, God. Okay, schematically, what stuff do you, you like? Do it. Uh, Loss of four. We'll get together at the end of the end of the week after we see how plays look, and you know we didn't do that as much on the front. I think end we got to like cut so, laser. Uh, now we're doing it more. Shane, it's, it's, and it's, put it up there and just have it in our rolodex. Feels good, and so and then the players got because you have a lot of fans. Last one. No, Potash. Lasers call in the plays. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, this seemed like a continuation of Mitch's resurgence. I know you mentioned the next play mentality, but what is it about him executing plays that is different or better? What what strikes you about what he's doing uh, out there and just running this offense and making those just simple pull plays? Pull that fucking mask over his face. <laughs> well, Bill's um, always pitching no matter what. You know, what do you he's, want he's me to do? very comfortable schematically in what we're doing. Bullshit. You want to fucking win? Schematically, when you're able to run the football – you don't um, win schematically doing dumb when shit. you start I'm telling you, growing off good of teams, what you've done. That in changes years the whole fucking game. You lose 28 you know, whether it's some stuff fucking 10, and, and that's the pass. end of it. Uh, it's just, I think the time Still together calling plays really, there, a we won't tolerate stuff, the bullshit. The time that he's grown in this offense, the highs and lows that he's had, um, the communication now that he, the that he gives that's us, the we work problem. through that throughout the week to where we condense it and we, we get the, the game plan to where he feels really good. And then now what happens is schematically with the stuff we're doing, which is obviously different than what we've been doing, um, he feels comfortable. We feel comfortable with it. We have great weeks of practice. We keep defenses kind of on their heels. And then if they decide to shut something down, one part of the offense, then we got to be able to have a counter with something else. I don't know, Joel. When I have a chance to coach in the NFL, hopefully I will. We'll, the the we'll decide the that. Shutting, Matt Nagy, by the way, was a real estate runs. agent, and so, a fucking uh, arena league football player. Some and you know the we fucking story. Things and it worked. I love people like Thanks, you, Coach. Joe. All right, see you. Keep it 100. Bye, Matt. Thanks for the fucking insight on stupidity. <laughs> Under Joel's <laughs> philosophy that Mark Tressman, <laughs> Mark Tressman must be hell of a hell of a head coach yeah. then since he coached in the NFL. You hold people accountable exactly. when you know the game. And you study it and you fucking showcase who 
you are. I'm not hiding behind a fucking typewriter or a computer keyboard writing up what I think. I'm showing you each and every week, Joel, that what the reality is. I keep it 100. I'll include everybody. If Joel wants to fuck come on the show and talk that and run that mouse, that's fine. Let's do it. But the reality to me is when you are first and goal at the one in a game in the NFL and you are pr praising that it looked good in practice all week, it's an unveiling like the fucking Wizard of Oz. His ass was lucky Dorothy turned that shit around and you gave fucking Fruit Loops and the little fucking fake heart and all that bullshit. That's the problem because you're going to be a fucking fraud. Keep this job when you tried to fucking turn it around and think you're the smartest person in the world. Nick Foles not running the football. All the things you see that transpired in six fucking embarrassing losses in a row when you're five and fucking one. Five and one. And you're talking about identity in year three? You can't figure it out? That's why, Joel. That's why I get fired up. This is reality here. This isn't fucking nursery school. Go get that at another network. It's amazing to me how many people, how many people get in here. Oh, Joel. Get rid of Joel. Why are we talking about Joel? Billy Joel is the only one I want to fucking talk about. <laughs> It's like crazy. Oh man, I get fired up. Because no, you don't want me. You don't want me coaching the offensive line. No, I'm gonna. No. I'll be upstairs. No. I'll be in Shane the. Will, Shane will take care of the fucking drafting of the guys that I please beg him to draft. I don't have any problem coaching this team because I will make sure the reality of the identity is found in fucking August. We're gonna know who we are offensively, and how we're going to do it. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to go back. Unfortunately, the old network deleted all my fucking work. So you could see that I was saying this for years. By the way, thank you, Shane and Greg Braggs, for pointing out the reality of what I put into the fucking work and study and do this. You think I'm fucking just throwing this shit up there like it's new? No. We're holding people accountable because you have an opportunity to turn this season around and win football games. But that ain't going to happen against Green Bay, and it ain't going to happen in the playoffs. So if you do this dumb shit, this gimmick shit, how many of you honestly look in the mirror saying, hey, there's Maggie's gimmick, there's his gimmick. How many of you had said that? You knew, was you? you knew you it was know coming. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. So you know he's stupid, can't be fixed. So when it's in the biggest moment, if, if you don't hard-ass question this motherfucker, you're never going to redirect the thinking of mistakes. He thinks it's okay. He thinks it's okay now. Oh, it got cute. It worked all week. No, it doesn't work. That's how you got to fucking be in the NFL, Joel. My fucking uncle was the head coach, Joel. That's that's all you got to know, Joel. <laughs> I might love Joel. I don't know. Maybe I love him. Hold me accountable, Joel. When I take over the job someday, I don't. It'll probably be with the fucking Packers. The way my life is going, that's what will happen. I'll be the head coach of the Packers, and I'll tell you what: I will beat the living shit out of every fucking team, and that's how this game is. You cheer for the jersey. That's what we do here. We analyze. He's Shane's talking about a guy that we love, Akeem Hicks. He's loafing out there. It's terrible. It's getting worse he's and loafing worse. Loafing out there. And you know, everyone's Phil, focused on Khalil Mack. He's getting triple team. He's getting grabbed. Phil, I pointed it out at the beginning of the game. I saw some energy from, from Akeem Hicks, and it was after the first couple of plays. But to me, having the, the benefit of uh, hindsight at this point, that was – Almost like that. That was trying to get him going because I mean he's he's either hurt or he's getting to that cliff, and it's 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 becoming an issue. <laughs> I agree. I I laugh only because there is a place in football that you define who you are defensively or offensively. If you let up on the gas pedal and you allow a shitty team to stay in a the game, they have an opportunity to win. If you are going after people 
and you know your identity is what it is, then you decide who you're going to win. And that's why you've been on this slide, this just land. To typify ball. just how the locked green in you guys Packers. are, you are in particular with this offense. Is uh, Can you tell me a little bit about that play and just how in the big picture it just kind of re- seems to represent the improvement that you and everyone has made uh, in this offense this year? Yeah, I think we've just put more of an emphasis on situational football. And I think it all starts with – just communication in the huddle. Where'd you hear that before? Know, like what the down distance is. It's it's fourth and five. Held his we coach. We gotta have this one. We have to have a few it. weeks. So once I let everybody know that, I gotta I mean, give obviously them credit. everyone knows that. But I think me saying Money that Mitch. it's everyone locked in. Everyone's listening to the play. We go out there. We're believing in the call. Um, and then we just go out there and execute it. They they gave us a a good look. They brought a little pressure. I just fade to the left and A Rob beat the guy up on a nice slant route and. Um, it, it worked out for us, but it starts with all 11 guys playing as one. Um, and, it, and it starts with communication and, and, and doing a great job getting in and out of the huddle. Brad Biggs. Brad Biggs, he'll ask him a defense. Hey Mitch, how did you – Coach <laughs> Nagy said you just sort of went to next play mentality after that pick there at the end of the uh, second what is he quarter. Supposed to is do? that easy to do? How do you, how do you process that? Yeah, it was um, it was it was frustrating because I knew right there away. I, that's I the right answer, Mitch. To do too much. You're pissed at yourself play. for doing it. Um, probably just throw that one away or or no, tuck definitely it in. throw it away. Probably. Definitely, definitely. Um, Don't say so I was frustrated by I, I frustrated like myself. Paul just two two like steps that, forward, two steps back. Yeah, coach. I just talked to Coach Flip on the sidelines. Um, he, he got me right. I was able to lock back in. Uh, make some adjustments at halftime so we can come out and have a big third quarter. But that's exactly what it was. It was next play mentality. I, was, I just settled down a little bit, not trying to force things. Um, and it just allowed us to execute and have, have a big third quarter. Ask him, what Mike Berman, pa- what pass are you pissed off at in this game? What play? Mitch was going to ask you about the third quarter for getting kind of a, a, an up and down first half, the bad pick in the end zone. And then you guys just really um, – do a great job offensively in the third quarter. What was said at halftime and then what allowed you guys to be so effective in the third? Yeah, we kind of just said, uh, let's let's just go out and be us. We, were, we weren't finishing the way we wanted to finish. We weren't executing on all cylinders like we, like we can. So let's play 11 as one. Let's go out there, be us. And let's have some fun in the third quarter in the second half. So um, it, there wasn't really too much said. Everyone know, knew what they had to do, but – we just went out and did it and it, and it made for a fun third quarter. And a lot of it started um, up front, just the O-line creating holes for the running That's backs. That's right, team. Me time, um, to make Going up against your rival now. And then They're not the, the fucking Texans. Out the, the, the Lions. With some They're the fucking, the ball back <laughs> and giving them absolutely the fucking nothing Jaguars. Um, they had a the great quarter, win so last the week against the Vikings. And, and getting us the ball That's back. That's your rival. We just rolling a little Give you props for that. It was just everyone being locked in and playing the way we know we're capable of. Jason Leisure. Mitch, did you feel like overall today you guys got a continuation of the progress that you've been making offensively? Second half, yes. I thought we could have been a little bit better in, in, the, in the second quarter. Um, just with our communication, getting being faster in and out of the huddle and getting substitutions in the game uh, a little bit better. And I thought we cleaned it up the second half. So. Uh, I think it was just some self-inflicted stuff in the second quarter, but we made those adjustments at halftime. Uh, I like came when out players and was, like was get playing fast at and themselves. Quarter, so that's exactly good thing to make adjustments. And they know when to self-correct or and when to get on each other and just communicate. The defense is getting paid too, so you're going to make I, mistakes. I we did make some progress. You get pissed in, off in for the, getting fooled. Or um, making something stupid happen. And, and coming away with so Don't go forward by saying I fucked up, and then go backwards. Mitch, say maybe uh, on the interception, what was it that convinced you to cut it loose? And then also on the, the second touchdown pass to me, what did you – the way that came open? The, I didn't hear the last part. The second what pass to Mooney? The, no, the, the second touchdown pass to Jimmy. Oh, uh, to Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, on the interception, I saw A-Rob put his hand up and then hit, the DB fell down. Um, and then I was trying to get it up to him, and I figured it was just going to be a jump ball, and I was kind of getting hit as I thrown as I was throwing, so it didn't come out the way I wanted it. It fluttered in the air a little too long, and I believe the the linebacker came over and made a good play on it. So I just I knew it was a 50-50 ball. Everything's Don't do happening it. Not in the fucking red zone. Split milliseconds. That's um, not okay. And it, it turned out to be a bad to decision. Answer common nonsense. 
no, interceptions here and there. Fun. A chance to, in the to red zone, play, but I just it's a sacrilegious football sin. Do not fucking um, just throw just a ball make up decisions for this offense. Uh, and as for the just second like touchdown, just said. Uh, we had a little double. Move I don't mind you taking chances and doing coverage. that when you're uh, moving. He ran a great route. The, in the, the red the zone, that no was covering and throw down. Oh, we got a chance. Spot where only he could catch it. No and, chance. Uh, he stayed on his feet and, and made a. Well, he fell at the end, but he made a great grab. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big exactly. Play. It was thrown into fucking triple coverage. Kevin Fishbane. Throw it out of bounds. Live to but fight. You know, it's been obviously a challenge for the offense over the past couple of years to stack games back to back to back. And you guys have now had, you know, four in a row with 30 plus points. Franchise hasn't done that in, you know, 65 years. Um, exactly. What is the feeling like for you as a quarterback to just have that question. confidence now week in, week Nagy, out? We're going to dance. You guys are operating at this level. We're at the prom with Nagy. I think it does give us confidence. And I think it all starts with an expectation, just having a high expectation for ourselves in this offense that this is what we're capable of. And nothing less is going to be acceptable. So I think if we just have that mentality and are locked in at practice and are just demanding of each other while also having each other's backs with uh, throughout the process, uh, we can continue to keep growing and progressing. And and who knows what we can do with this the offense. Question? But we got to be proud of the work. Now, one question about Green that, Bay. That expectations are, are higher and higher for us each week when we keep getting better. What are we doing here? Joe Phillips. Come on, Joe Phillips. All right, congratulations. Joe Mitchell this one. today. Um, just um, this is this question is for next week's game. There you so go. How important there is you come go. Out as game busters against the pack. <laughs> how important does it come out and play well? Awesome, game busters. Yeah, though. it's gonna be huge. Um, we know what, what's at stake this weekend. Uh, we're gonna enjoy the win tonight. This is for the playoffs now. This tomorrow, is it, but it just sets up, sets up for a special opportunity. Same attitude to, in the chat um, next week. Our season strong against uh, against a rival like this. So um it's a must-win game just like these last couple of games have been um and we definitely want to play our best ball and, and finish strong so we just got to keep getting better go back to work this week have have a great week of practice um, we'll run another and, tight end and, sweep and it'll work to great ourselves a great chance on sunday john a couple more Mark you don't Brody. run a tight end sweep ever at Pitch, the one yard line what this, no other team the does that thriving Show offense me it. means for i've the never team, seen it what does that's this meant why. to you that's why personally. I'm it's been a crazy season for especially you. the bears who don't block well um, don't run that fucking play. It's been good. Solid feel, block it. Give it to um, Montgomery. Lucky and it's fourteen to, to three play, to be back in this offense to be out there with my guys playing, um, it, it, and it's been a crazy season. But I'm just fortunate to be out there to be able to play. Um, this is a kid to be able that's to fucking saving win, so. the fucking um, job of Matt I just, love, I just love our mindset where we're at right now. How we keep getting better. How we battle through adversity. Not only myself, but we we battled adversity as a team, and we just continue to come closer together. Um, and that's what, that's how you create special memories, just getting through the tough times and, and enjoying the great times together. So we can't compare we the Chiefs week, and so the Bears and strong and ever. And that's what I'm ever. looking forward to. There's um, no comparison in their offense. Last None. one, Brad Biggs. Mitch, were you able to watch the 49ers win last night? If so, where were you guys at? You know, what was the mood like? Uh, how did that go down? What did you eat? I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I was did just checking the pizza? score. Um, because I know when I watch games, it, it won't work out the way I, I want them to. So I was just checking the score. I was getting updates and texts from other people. I was trying not to pay attention. Um, but the great game by the 49ers. Uh, I got a Kittle's comment. We trained together coming out for the combine. He, he played. He played really well. So uh, I'm happy for CJ and, and them, and they they really helped us out. Now, Thanks, what's Mitch. the rule now, Thanks, guys. Shane? What's up? We... So if the Packers win tonight, they essentially are locked in and they're good? Well, the Bears I obviously had to win today. Right. If the Cardinals lose to the Rams next the week, Bears are automatically then, the, then the, Green, the Bears don't even have to win. But that's oh, – I don't even want that mentality. I, I'm yeah. trying to set this up. Because I'm yeah. more concerned about the big picture. Yeah. I want to say this before we go. I want the Packers to have something to play for. Me too. I, I agree. want the Bears to put to it on them. Fucking Packers. Yeah. That's the fucking. Can't be. You can't be scared of that. You can't. If you're scared of that and you want an easy in, then fucking go to another network. I want my answers, McCaskey. I want to know. You can't just say, "Let's bring this asshole back." He's proven shit to me. You know what's proven? If you're going to praise someone for fucking finally recognize their errors three years later, 
then you're fucking in the wrong business. Yeah. My business is about putting a championship together. And this fucking coach put Nick Foles in there, put an emphasis on passing the ball. Remember, in the history of this franchise, they've never had a game where they ran the ball under eight times ever. Matt Nagy brought that to this franchise. Matt Nagy can't figure out how good David Montgomery is until Cordero Patterson gets hurt. Matt Nagy is a big time issue. This isn't the Chiefs where you have the best fucking tight end in football and you can hand him the ball off. He's a former quarterback. Cole Komet is not a fucking elusive runner. So you don't fucking run that play ever, ever. The only one you give it to, seven to three, is the guy that's right here coming up on the fucking show. That's who you give the ball to. Let's get a little bit of this guy. Kind of going in and out. He said it again. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Coach Nagy said that for the last three weeks or so, you guys have had a very consistent message about where you're going. Can you kind of describe what that message is and, and what the – This kid is so good. He breaking up. I can't hear him. Yeah, he's breaking we'll up. Back to you. We'll come back to you, Dan. I am breaking up. I'm sorry, JJ. <laughs> hey, David, I'm just curious what what you guys are feeling on that first drive coming out of halftime where it looked like you were in sync a little bit and then you picked up that fourth down, what that just maybe did for you guys the rest of the game. Go for it. Go for it. That was the <laughs> fourth and five conversion to A-Rob uh, on that first drive in the third quarter. Oh, we were just in go mode. You know, just got to go. Just got to attack, you know, uh, put the foot on the gas and – Give this kid the ball. Kind of came out slow. The Best first player on the team. And, you know, I it, agree. Ha- it, it no. hasn't been how we've been playing. I honestly agree. Weeks, so, um, we went to the locker room. He's your, he's your identity. We focus on accountability. He's the guy. The standpoint of it all, holding each other accountable. And look, we said that when we came out in the second Shane. half, we started attacking, and that's what we did. Have I said this for two oh, years? Mike Furman? Longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. This kid David, doesn't get the recognition. This has been such a crazy up and down season. But to arrive yeah. at week 17 with a chance to win, you know, to beat your big rival and get in the playoffs. How would yeah, you describe okay. that opportunity? Um, you Just know, give me the ball. Opp- it's an opportunity that I wouldn't rather – I would rather – I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else um, than the guys that I have that we're getting ready to do it with. Um, so I'm excited for the opportunity. I would get the pads um, they're flailing. They're come out and they're going to play. Give us, Smacking give us the there. pads. We're going to do the same thing. So – um, I trust my guys. I trust my brothers um, to the left and the right. Wants it no other way. Back. So there you um, go. We're gonna take this week as serious as we ever took it, and we're gonna, you know, prepare. We're gonna do what we got to do so that we can tell him, Max. Up. He's a beast. Dan will try you again here. He cares. This time, you got me. <laughs> talk, <laughs> dummy. Just Co- talk. Coach said that you can. This isn't sprint. You guys have had a, a consistent message for the last. Three, three weeks or so, and he, uh, that you guys had a message about where you guys are headed. What would you describe as the message that you guys have been playing under in the last three weeks? Um, it's honestly trust and just being able to take it one day, one practice, one game at a time. You know, relying on each other. And um, when it gets tough, when it gets hard, you know, you just got to focus on the guys next to you and focus on that play. And, you know, at the end you of the day, him you know, run 10%, run whoever goes out there and wants it more, grab that ball. That's just what it's been. He's so just trucking. We've been fighting for each other through the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Even the touchdown Steve run. Steve Leventhal. The center gets blown yeah, back. Yeah, David. <clears> congratulations. The right tackle gets blown back. He almost had another 100 yard game. He needs just himself. Talk about being in a rhythm, being in a groove so out there good, carrying man. the ball. Yeah, I just love guys this kid. are doing a hell of a job. They've been doing a hell of a job um, for a long time now, and I appreciate those guys. So, um, me being able to get in the rhythm is not up to me. It's definitely up to those guys up front, and they and they always do that for me. So, um, you know, this I kid says all the right the things. Those guys and the wide receivers blocking and the tight end is doing what the tight end is do. And, you know, Mitch affecting um, the naked or him just being him. So, um, just being able to get in the rhythm is, is so big. funny. Yeah, like, the, the two out. guys, Nagy, JJ, treats like redheaded stepchildren. Are the guys yeah, that are saving his fucking Going into job. attack mode in the third quarter and, and giving your guys it. issues in the third quarter earlier this season, how nice did it feel? How, how much of a confidence boost do you get by just going out and saying, hey, we are going to go into attack mode here? 
it's just a trust factor at that point. Just talk you know, about yeah, it's him. It's a confidence factor, but it's a trust at that point, you know. Mm. I, we all got to have the same mentality. We all got to be on the same accord, and, you know. So when one person says, let's attack, let's attack, let's let's do that, then that's what we all do. So, like I said, we just fall in line, trusting each other, having each other back and being accountable for each other and, you know, just fighting to the end of it. Thanks for your time, David. Thank for you, sure. David, for just being a tremendous asset to this team. Really, the penicillin that has turned around this team is the running back number 30. He's got to be the focal point next. I mean, he's got to be this the game got, plan. Exactly. He's got to be your game plan against Green Bay. Obviously, we're going to get into that all week long. Sad part about it is, Phil, I have a feeling that Nagy, part of the philosophy, I understand Patterson is hurt and wanted to limit his usage today, but I think that he was <laughs> doing crazy. it with Green Bay in in mind, and that's that's oh, my goodness. that's my fear. But it would not sh it wouldn't surprise me at all. Can you upload that play just to remind people uh, against the Rams fourth and one? I think this week we're gonna make sure we have every fourth and one that, and I, this isn't. And we're gonna get to our guests coming up. I just want to make this last point. This isn't this isn't a network that's going to be recency bias and pom-poms. We're going to talk about repeat offending. And that is in fourth down and one in critical situations, this coach has a tendency to go empty sets or have Cordero Patterson in the game in critical moments to run the ball. And it's proven historically bad. And he can't figure that out. So this week, we'll make sure to remind fans and their organization who, oh, by the way, I know the players watch our show, and I know the organization watches our show, and that's okay. But the reality is you got to make sure 32 is the message to Green Bay this week. And then everything for Mitch will open up, and Mitch could be Mitch because he can't make those mistakes against a rival as you know, they're playing hot football, Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers with the football, say what it is you want about the guy. He is the last person you want to have the last possession in a game. It's just he's that good. So you got to play mistake free, completely sharp as a razor football. There can't be a missed assignment in a critical situation. There can't be a misplay call because it worked good in practice. It's going to work then, but they gave us a different look. You do what you practice well. You don't guess. And that is where this network, this is where I'm standing today. In a win, in a blowout win, you won't get it anywhere else. I can guarantee you there's fucking pom-poms, roses thrown, but it ain't going to be here. Hopefully our guest is going to come in here and bring some passion and fire. You don't have to copy me. If you don't have it, you don't have it. But you got to have hype. It's 100 Crew Hot Takes. Phil and Shane bringing on a fan to talk Bears and what just happened in the Bears game each and every week. You have to have hype. Phil's always telling me to hype. You can't be flat. So be ready, be prepared, and bring your passion. And hype coming out of my ass. It's 100 crew hot takes. Hashtag Spencer Strong. Those are big. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bears Hour Live, the best post game show on the Bears. Sammy the Bull. What are you, Italian, Sammy? Uh, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood from northwest side of Chicago, and I'm Puerto Rican, actually. So, uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> with that name, Sammy. Big game today. Bears needed it, obviously. They go yeah. out, they played a sloppy kind of first half, and then came out in the second half and really put it to the Jags. Talk about what you felt. You obviously been watching what Shane and I have been saying. Yeah, you know, everyone's hyped on the Bears right now, and they're excited, you know, and they're talking about, you know, Nagy's finally found his identity. But to me, I still think it's a fucking joke, and I'll be honest. You know, I think I'm just going to say and keep it real, keep it 100 like you say in the show, right? You know, the problem is is that he's got these cutesy plays. He's trying to make things happen. 
he finally figures out his identity having Montgomery run with the ball. But the problem was is because Cordell Patterson got hurt. So yeah. now we know that there's going to be the evolution of what they're going in. So until Cordell Patterson didn't get hurt, would he ever have found his identity? Probably not. We'll probably be still sitting here arguing and yelling and, and being mad at the fact that he's not giving them more than fucking eight touches a game, and we're still in this bowl. But, okay, we got past that now. So now we have the offensive line that we got to work on. They've gotten better, let's be honest, the past couple weeks. They're doing better. You know, but Leno, still a big problem. Right, right. side, still a big problem. Center, we don't know where we're going to go from here. There's a lot of holes that we got to fill throughout this whole, you know, looking forward in the next year. And that's a problem moving forward. Pace, do you want him picking a fourth quarterback? I don't think so. I know I don't. You had Glennon. You had you have a uh, you know Trubisky was in there. You had Glennon. You had no uh, uh, folds. Now what are we gonna do? So there's still a lot of problems there. Do you want them to go to the playoffs? I love my Bears. Don't get me wrong. Born and raised in the Northwest Side of Chicago, I love my team to like die. But is this really the team that we want to move forward? I don't know. Is this a coaching staff? Is this the organization? Want that that's, why, that's really why I want the Packers to have to have something meaningful for them. I don't want to play the Packers without Aaron Rodgers. I don't. I, I think everybody should. I want the Bears in the playoffs. I'm telling you that right now. But I want it to be the litmus test for the McCaskies to figure the fuck out that you're going against your rival. Everything's on the line here. If they go out there and the Packers have a – let's bench him or playing the fucking backups and the Bears beat him fucking 17-10 and everybody's – no, that's not what I want. I want the matchup to be meaningful and I want the Bears to fucking win because then I'll know that Matt Nagy could go up against the rivalry and go out there and play – your best game to make it count. Because once you get in that fucking dance, anything can happen. And I think that's the most important thing. I don't want the layup. I don't want, you know, I look back, Shane talked about this at the time at the old network. When uh, we beat Minnesota and we should have just played our backups and had an easier road strategically. I was on the other end. Like, no, you beat everybody. You go there. But looking at this, it's kind of the opposite angle of it because you want the impetus, the spotlight to be on Nagy. Are you going to re-sign Mitch? If mm-hmm. Mitch goes out there, beats his rival, they go to the playoffs, then all of a sudden you're cooking with fire, you actually stress out this organization to make the right calls because just like you're saying with Patterson, it's the same thing in this scenario with the head coach. Injured? Or stupidity losing against your rival. Yeah, you know, that's just to, to jump on what you said, Dr. Phil. I mean, I, I feel the Bears do have a way to get to the playoffs. We all know it. they got to win next week. But is it really going to be the win that's going to fulfill our hearts, right? I don't know. You know, do I want them to go to playoffs? Of course I do. Do I want them to succeed? Of course. I'm a fucking Bears fan. But mm-hmm. the problem is there's too many levels and layers that are involved with this. I'm worried. I, you know, I, I'm not a Nagy fan. I'm not a Pace fan. I'm definitely, hell, not a fucking Ted Phillips fan. So there's our problem right there and laying ahead of us. I don't know. So we'll, we'll fucking see. probably going to retire. That, well, we hope so. We that's hope so. been yeah. told to me by more than one yeah. person. He's yeah, going to go that's... out into the fucking desert <laughs> sun. He's, do- he's done. That'll be one problem. Shane had came up with a great – scenario of what they probably I think it's the do. scenario that's going to happen yeah Go i ahead. really do take it over here i scenario. just think with them them bouncing back and showing some life like i said i'm not a naggy guy i'm ready for i'm ready for the the clean sweep but i just in true chicago bears fashion i think that the way that they're going to do it because they're they're an organization that isn't going to be taking huge risks when it comes to to leadership uh, you know, leadership positions, team president, GM, and head coach. I think what you'll see is Ted retiring or being reassigned completely out of the picture. You know, he'll be more of a financial guy on the other, you know, other side of the building where he's not going to be at the forefront. He's not going to be on the Madden game. He's not going to be doing pressers during the off season. He's not going to be involved at all. They'll bring in a team president who's going to have 
full autonomy over everything. That'll he's gonna That's he's gonna sure. he's gonna evaluate Mitch. He's gonna evaluate Pace. Ryan Pace. He's gonna evaluate Matt Nagy, Nagy, Chuck Pagano, the whole football ops. And it's gonna unfortunately it's gonna happen for 2021. And if he sees signs or things that he wants to keep, he'll keep them. And if it's going to be a clean sweep, then you'll see the team president make the call. To me, that's that. to me that's yeah. that's going to remove George from taking all the heat on all of this because he's because as soon as you as soon as you see t- yeah it's it's he's up, he's up on the fucking mountaintop, but that's his safety net. All right, we got we got sweaty Teddy out. Yeah, so now we out. have our leadership, and now he's going to pick and choose who he wants. It's already here because let's be honest. Like I said, I, I said this on the last uh, time we talked. There, there's going to be a lot of really, really tough decisions. There's going to be players that yep. you love on this roster that so are not going to be Bears in 2021 for financial reasons and financial reasons only. And you guys know where I'm talking about. If you watch the Christmas show, I brought up 96. And that's, I'm telling you. We don't know where we're gonna go with heads. Let, I mean, let me look ask, at the play how we play. You know. Let me ask you both this question. This is what I wanted. You saw my post, Big Sammy the Bull, last night. This is the litmus test for Nagy. This is how you want. If you're a Bears fan, you prayed for this scenario. Now you got it. It's Bears versus Packers. If the Chicago Bears go home against the Packers for the playoffs and they lose, can you still keep Nagy as ESPN is reporting? No fucking way. No fucking way. They will. They should, if they, they will. do, sure, this, is, you're right. this is the backwards thinking. Uh, but Phil, on, they've, been, they've been backwards for that, a I'm majority of 101 years. Have, I know. You have to have a voice here. I'm talking to you, George. I know you watch this. I'm talking to you. Everything should be on the scale of the rivalry game, even if Rodgers doesn't play. The Bears have to win for you to keep your motherfucking job. Get in the playoffs. I always said it. If they go to the playoffs, they all stay, except Phillips. They all stay. That should be this ESPN fucking report should not even be existing. Oh, they're staying. You don't give nobody a job. Win! Your fucking mediocrity is okay. You're going to get to the end of the season where you want it to be. You got your identity. You fucking running tight, tight end sweep. Tight end fucking, fucking sweep. fucking years to figure it out. Come two on. fucking years to figure this and out. Now you're gonna Every other show was fucking saying the same thing. Run the goddamn ball. Give it to fucking Montgomery. Get him fucking 18 to 20 carries a game. Now we're there. We're there. You know? We're finally We're there. there, Sammy. Finally the- there. Guys, I love you guys. You've been a great – I love listening to you guys. Great show. I've been following you since your old network, believe it or not. Really? Um, yeah, so I've been uh, I've been around again. Draft Dr. Phil, when you started breaking down film, and that's how I kind of caught on. I was like, wow, I'm going back to college. I'm going back to the film room. And I started watching, and I'm seeing, you know, what the offensive line doing because that was my position back in the day. You know, and I'm like, okay. You know, passing, let's see what your wrist is going to do, what kind of plays are going. Then I see Nagy and his bullshit plays coming in more, more, more. I'm like, Nagy, you don't have the fucking quarterback, let alone the scheme and the players to be able to run these plays. We don't have KC's team over here. We got the Bears. Dumb it down. What's so hard about that? We know that. All of us here in the show and the the network know that. How come they can't fucking figure it out? You know? American Mail, American Mail, here's some breaking news. We aren't in the playoffs right now. We're not in the playoffs yet, American Mail. But when we do get in the playoffs, no one is going to hate. We're just going to have a parade. Oh, I get it. American Mail just wants to, he wants to do his thing. So, exactly. You know, look at that dub plays. Like, like we all talk about that tight end with Komet with the tight end sweep over. When I saw that, that play happen, immediately I thought of you, Dr. Phil, and I thought about. (laughs) What the fuck he's going to say? And how is this going to make us better as a team? I mean, why don't you just give the fucking ball, run a power eye, and give the ball to Montgomery and get a fucking one yard? What's so hard about that? Why do I, It doesn't take a rocket science to figure this out. Why does Nagy always got to be so cute? The other cute play that he did, and this was back in the first series, 
was the pass to Mooney, the reverse around. Oh, yeah. It was a three to four yard loss. Why are you running that play in that situation? That's oh, not a play. God. I know exactly who's playing. Series, the first play of the series, they come out lined up in an open back front. Why? Why don't you call it with Montgomery running the ball at the fucking middle? Why? Oh, it's Sammy. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I get a little intense. No, no we, love it. It. we love it. We love it. I thought you were going to tear your jersey off and start going really crazy. <laughs> I, just, I don't get it. And I was talking to my old man. I'm like, Pops, you see this fucking monkey bullshit? And he's like, he goes, yeah, you know, they got they got problem. You know, I don't understand why I just don't give the guy the ball. I don't get it. I don't understand. You know, I think my eight-year-old nephew can figure this out. Yeah, you. I think if you go back, if you uh, watch the Mitch Presser, you know, post game. When he said, you know, they asked him what the difference was, and he said, well, we're uh, situational football. <laughs> we're coaching up the situation. That is a, that's, that's Mitch Trubisky saying, fuck you, Matt. It's not that hard. And that, that's exactly what that is. I love that's- the fact that Sammy thinks of me in that moment, this network. Back to my father said to me, he was here for Christmas. He's like, these fans, they really love you guys and what you're doing. I was like, Dad, they love you too. He's like, yeah. I know, I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's true. Awesome. And he, thank you. And he goes to me, I, How many of them think of you when Charles Leno misses a play or coaches? And you just said it right there. So I'm going to play it for my dad to, tonight. I'm going to record it. Look at Sammy. Sammy. You're getting a shout out from Lemonhead look Stinson. At, look at that. Stinson in the <laughs> Mule was at the Texans game. Lemuel, you got to be careful out there in Houston. I love Lemuel. Lemuel, you fought. The Bears are playing the Packers. We got to get Lemuel on the show yeah. after the game. Lemuel, DM me. We'll get you on Bears Packers BHL next week. He's got to be know, one just, of the guests. I hope anyway. next week. When the Bears do play the Packers, they yeah. bring fucking wood chips. You know, they're flying around an old school fucking football game, 14 10, you know, some fucking low scoring, smash mouth football. You don't see that from this team. You don't see that pride in the old school Bears fucking Packers matchup. I don't see that. You know, the last person actually I did see that was Lovey Smith with a 10 and 6 record. They fired his ass. But you know what? He always came out and said, We're going to fucking beat the Packers. Get off the and ball. he always off running. Always. He did, but he put a purpose on it. As Lemuel will tell you, there is one thing I know about the McCaskies. They hate losing to the Packers. That's where I want that litmus for Nagy. Because, listen, gun to our head, gun to their head, money not involved. They all know Nagy's not the head coach. You all know that. That play alone could have cost you the game. How is how does that have momentum? That's how. Just like you said, if now you can't, you want to do tricks, you want to be gimmicky, put two 360 pounders in there and run the ball up the middle. Then I'll laugh and we'll have a good time, but you are attacking aggressively. You know what's not aggressive, Sammy? Going east west with the 265 pound. I don't give a shit. When Lemuel, he was just on here, I see him. He was 150 pounds, Shane. Yeah. 150, and he came up and put his face into somebody. When you but he brought wood playing, chips, man. He brought yeah, wood chips. You're playing in the NFL. You don't go east and west at the goal line. You don't. That's Kansas City can do it because guess what? They're all running four fives, four fours. <laughs> the tight end is a four five guy, and he's an, a former quarterback, an athlete. Our tight end, Cole Komet, he's growing. I love him. But he ain't Good fucking boy. four or five and an athlete that's twitchy at the goal line. If you put Cole Komet, Especially in a compressed area. Exactly. If you put Cole Komet at fullback and gave him the ball, I'd be championing you. I would be. I'd be like, all right, Mag- Nagy, you get it. Because Scoot, that yeah. gimmickry is – yeah, it's north-south. It's aggressive. You want to have some fun? Get him in the V formation with fucking big-ass hicks and fucking give him the ball and dive in like it did the Giants. That's fucking winning – gimmicky and all that but this shit no that drives oh me God. insane because i know you're playing your rivals next week sammy and bears oh packers God. means something to it it does and and now it means everything you're against the wall you're against the wall win and you're in this that's what else could you what else could you ask for as a bears fan and as an owner this woman i don't know how many years left she has on this planet 
And then I'm not saying it to be funny. She has to have some say in the reality of this game. It is so important that you guys go in there with your identity, like you're saying, fucking ch wood chips. I would fucking, just because you said that, as a coach listening, I'd bring the wood chipper into fucking practice, and it'd be shooting when they came out of the locker. Yeah, the throw fucking Maggie's playbook in it. <laughs> yeah, right in that fucking thing. Throw Maggie's playbook in it. I be love you, it. Buddy, I love you. Listen, I know I come off a certain way, but I live and die for football. I love this game. I'm going to watch football, and then tonight I promise my kids we're going to watch some more movies with popcorn. I'm going to have a blast. The Bears well, won. The lady out of here. I'm like, hey, I got a special going on. I got I to gotta be on TV. <laughs> you gotta think, think, get it, get it. You're with us since the old network, bringing some yeah. passion yeah. and fire. Yeah, You're man. doing exactly how I want fans to come on. This show is based on you guys. Use the fan. Joel – I'm joking with you, Joel. I bust everybody's balls, and so can you. It's fine. But you got to know who I am. I'm not coming on here talking We shit. weren't joking with an American male, though. We think he's a uh, dick. That's why we yeah. blocked him. <laughs> so, I mean, I oh, I said, well, are we still alive? Are we still alive? I'm sorry. I forgot. I totally, totally Let's lost my marbles. Let's talk about this defense real quick because we haven't really talked much about yeah. it. But in a game like this, Mike Glennon, what – for me, stood out was Chuck Pagano. It wasn't Khalil Mack. You want to, you want me to come on here and trash somebody? I'm keeping it a hundred with you. There's no fucking trash on Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack. Or only time you can is if you see a loaf like Shane is pointing out with Akeem Hicks. That's when you could talk some. I didn't. Did you see Khalil Mack loaf today? No. No. I mean, it. I. I don't want to. I. I didn't focus on him every single play but right, right. not it didn't it's stick out play. like 96 did i'll tell you that yeah there was a bad play there when the when the ball was a dive right up uh hicks uh, uh number i think it was his two hole and the guy just stood there yeah and he ran right past him and he just kind of flopped over and got knocked out of the play and i was like come on hicks lower your fucking shoulder hit that fucking hole you know what to do he knows what to do but i think he's playing hurt guys well that and that's the thing sammy and you can't overlook the fact i mean when you're that large of a human being. I mean, six five. What is he? Three thirty five, three forty. Whatever he, whatever he is. Chris. Listen, when you're 30, 31, 32 years old, that fucking cliff comes fast. Exactly. And that's I'm not trying to degrade the man because he's a he's a great human, you know, great player, but. A great personality. Yeah, he's that's he was the thing. In his mouth in the beginning of the game. It well, like he was going to get excited, Phil. Like, but sometimes a lot of that can be false bravado to try oh, to yeah. get yourself going. To, to hey, what do we do here yeah. at the network, though? Down there, what do yeah. we do? Yeah, we will break down the defense. I don't know, mm -hmm. Sammy, if you are a patron subscriber, but if you <laughs> are and you are, you aren't. You're getting the full defensive breakdown. You got to December 31st. You'll be fucking grandfathered in at the $7 a month subscription right free. Get in there while the going and the getting is good because after that, I don't even know if this show is going to be here anymore. We might be behind the patron side only for patrons and get rid of all these fucking – trolls but i don't know we will talk about it <laughs> in oh, regards to this the defensive <laughs> breakdown last week i showed you keen hicks and i showed you how and why he was lazy and what he was doing just hey, Claude. like audio there you got me looking at my phone <laughs> what's up what's up sam how you doing buddy how you doing good good right. right. The tape never lies.com. Get your subscription in there. Full on breakdowns, teachings, pop up shows. Get an X and O's with my dad, breaking down five plays with the guys last week. I, I With me, actually, last week, we had a Christmas pop up show. Do yourselves a favor. If you love the video breakdowns on our YouTube channel, it's even more in depth. And as we get to the off season, I can guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. Live mock drafts. I promise we won't do 1,500 barely, Sebo. 
We only do a few. <laughs> and I promise you this, we're going to break down the draft, have draft guests on here, breaking down these players and doing everything in regards to what this team needs. Big time moves happen. We're going to be going live. So get your subscription. Become a TTNL 100 crew member. It's the best seven dollars you could spend. Anyway, that's my Sam, business. Listen, side. Sammy, I gotta say, I, I agree with you with the wood chipper comment, man. Listen, did you see the Bengals last week against the Steelers? Oh, they had nothing there. to fucking play for, and they Not fucking took it to them because they were a rival, and they fucking came out there. We need to come with fucking at least half of what they came with. We just the need something, Packers. man. We gotta have some pride, man. Like you put that fucking yeah. jersey on and. You're dying on it with that jersey on. I mean, that's how the way I look at it is. I mean, even when I was playing at fucking college, I went to small Indiana State University. But when I put my fucking jersey on, I was ready to smash anybody's face in front of me. I man. know, dude. That's some fucking know. pride, man. You know. Listen, man. You got you got hyped up before. You, you were on a rant like Phil. I, I was gonna yeah. fucking start streaming some music behind tone, you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Phil's music behind you. You're, You're doing the smoke weed every day. It's got to, it's, it's in that my contract. It's got to be played once a show. <laughs> That's right. It's got to be. Love it. Love Listen, it. everything Love this week leading up to the Green Bay Packers, we're going to be keeping it 100 Wednesday night. We're going to have The Bachelor on. Mikey. Yeah. Mikey T is going to be joining us. All the ladies thought we were talking about Jeremy Plashinsky. No, <laughs> not him. Not him. <laughs> Mikey, Mikey Zanelli or is it Tenelli? I think it's Zanelli. I gotta check. I'm fucking up, Mike. I just pretty, call him he's Mikey. pretty yoked up. You might want to get you might yeah. want to get the name Mike, right. Yeah, he looks like he could play Sam linebacker in a four three defense and be up there. Yeah, he was yeah, he was on the Bachelorette for a he, season. And he was on the Super Bat, whatever that Yeah, it's a uh, impa- Bachelor in Paradise Pat yes. in Paradise. Yeah. Bachelor in Paradise. He's a huge bear. I'm not watching. Yeah, exactly. I don't watch it either. But yeah, the the, the lady of the house watch. She, I think our yeah, I DVR is stuffed full of those. Is he exci- is she excited for the show. I showed her who he was, and actually, well, I guess I'll keep it hundred. She's like, "Wow, he was a dick." <laughs> so, but if you go back on his profile, he he says that himself. So we'll we'll talk to him about it. We're gonna talk to him about it. We're gonna keep it hundred. Huge fan of our show and our network. And he's a patron member as well. I saw, I saw um, somebody else, number eight, Toby Hill, and I forgot who the other guy. I know Matt Byers in there. A bunch of you I guys. I don't know there. Joel. Joel Cox. You think he's the oh Joel? Patron. Joel. Joel. He actually said he, he said he wanted to come on. He came well, on in the chat. Next like, week, bring me on. Yeah, he's he's Ryan Cox, distant like fourth <laughs> cousin. We'll Joel. Bring, Joel, I promise you, we're gonna get you well, on. If you come on, you gotta bring it like Sammy because this yeah, you gotta bring yeah. it. Yeah, you all you guys, man. Yeah. You guys, tell, uh, tell your wife we're sorry that we're we're keeping you from <laughs> all right. her. Right, she's shopping. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Out of here. Spending <laughs> Sammy's money. <laughs> yeah, of Cole's cash. Like, how much was that? What are you spending? <laughs> yeah. I know. I get dings on my phone. I know you're spending. My yeah. son was spending money on us. He fucking got into the. Amazon Fire. Oh, yeah. you thing. Watch. He bought like he bought an authentic Bears helmet. It was like 190 oh, wow. bucks on sale. Or something. That's and cheap. Bought, That's two, cheap for an authentic. He found, a, he found a fucking sale. Then he bought two face shields because he wants a shield when he plays. One was 90. <laughs> one was. A, I'm like looking at our fucking our uh, <laughs> bank account. I've already had the double mortgage, and I see these. I'm like, who's buying it? Steph's like, I didn't buy it. Did you see Patterson home. with the illegal face shield today? No. Yeah, he had it on. Yeah, he did. He had it on the first kickoff to him. He uh, he had the the, the rainbow face oh, shield. Really? That's it's a hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred percent illegal in the NFL. Really? Yeah, because you get knocked out, they can't see your eyes. Speaking, yeah. Speaking of Patterson, actually, I bring the yeah. question. Why, if he was playing on the kickoffs, obviously he wasn't hurt. So they're saving him for Green Bay, Claude. No, I'm saying, no, you think <laughs> I'm it serious. Was a decision by Laser or a decision by Nagy to not play? Him? This what guy, he just signed up. I don't give a shit about Corderell Patterson. That's Sean, Shawnee D13. Thank you. Now, I don't know what they're doing with him back there. I, I really don't. I, I think that that's part of their, I their really thought think process. My fucking heart aches. 
because Shane is about nice. It's why you didn't 90%. see Jalen Johnson. They were rolling the dice. 90% yeah. from the three-point line. Now I'm going to have anxiety next week. Sammy's going to be thinking of me every time Falcon Patterson's in the backfield oh, with God. that wide ass stance he gets into. I can't yeah. fucking take he's it, so, man. I he's got his hands on his hips. He's wide. At, I, I don't even have to look at the jersey at that point. I go, oh, Patterson's in. in. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. <laughs> Yeah, and we know that the Yankees don't call some plays here, man. Oh, I mean, you can no, see it. Yeah. I mean, you I can see it. I got to. You know about out. football, you can tell. I mean, that play today with with Komet, Oh yeah, oh, had a oh, was a was that, that was a naggy call. That Blaze was coming in. Hey, we're gonna put this. No, no, no. Trying to, no, no. Trying to be the genius. The genius. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm gonna have, think I'm gonna do this. You know, I'm gonna have something funny to say when I'm breaking down that play this week because. I can guarantee you not only did someone fuck up their assignment, uh, but the play call in itself, just throw it out of the playbook. You can't, you can't fix yeah. stupid, Phil. You cannot That's fix right. Sam, you know who comedi- what comedian said that? Ron White? You ever heard of that comedian? Ron White? No, I have not. Yeah, he's no. a funny dude. But anyways, he says I actually have that uploading if you want to risk it, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> risk it? Yeah. Big plays are nice. Aren't they? <laughs> it's uploading currently what Claude's talking go. about. I'll nice. let it go, and I'm still going to talk a little bit because I want to say this. Until I get to see the tape on the defense, I'm not pointing any fingers except I saw Akeem Hicks loaf yeah. three times. That was mm-hmm. just on visual TV. That's fine. You want to dial it in on sack number? Where's Mag? They should be sacked. This game was three-step game, maximum protection, and throw, try to throw and complete the ball. That's exactly. what their game plan was. So Phil, you're not here, going to get sacks like that. Here's you your, here's your fourth and one, and Claude's Ron White. Let me tell you something, uh. folks. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Put them both together there, huh? There's not a pill you can take. There's not a <laughs> class you can go to. Stupid <laughs> is forever. Stupid is for ever. You got Ron White's permission. Go, Shane. Okay. Yeah, he, he's gonna DM me later. I'm sure. I'll just I'll send him a bottle of whiskey. Hopefully, Ron <laughs> well, I know who he is now. I saw his face. I'm like, I know that guy. Oh, we're gonna yeah. get Hopefully, funny. It's funny. Yeah. Nice, Ron nice. White, we love you, Ron White, for keeping it a hundred there. Awesome. Hopefully, yeah, exactly. You can't fix stupid. Hopefully, <laughs> Nagy and company are ready to rock and roll against the. Green Bay Packers. I'm telling you, I this is what football is all about. This is what this network is about and built on. You guys, the fans, are going to be with us all week. Again, keep it at 100. Wednesday night, the night before New Year's Eve, we'll be live. We'll be having some fun, I'm sure. And the tape never lies will be out at some point this week, maybe that day or Thursday. It depends when it comes out. But Breaking it down like nobody else with The Bachelor, Mikey Z. And what else, Shane? Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I just I saw this pop up. B- BHL is free right now. We originally going into the season, it was going to be behind a Patreon wall, but we, we had such a great turnout and we, we were conscious of the the economy and people being out of work and, you know, every dollar counts. Uh, for some people, so we totally understood. You know, we we enjoy the big turnout that we have for this. So Phil and I huddled up with uh, Jim Larison and decided to keep BHL for this season free. We haven't made any decisions no, moving be forward. The off season, yeah, yeah. So as of you know, right now, it's it's going to remain free a hundred percent for as long as this season goes. But um, I, there is an issue with our regular YouTube channel streaming there we should be back up and ready to go around february 13th 
Uh, we're Valentine's hoping. Valentine's Day week. Yeah, yeah. So Sammy, we got the... you better be big on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, the old lady's already counting down, buddy. Uh, <laughs> wow. Sammy You're bringing the thunder. Uh, I got it, man. See, I'm I telling told, you. When I got married, I told my wife, there's no more Valentine's Day. Now we have an anniversary, so. Yeah, but no whatever I tell her, she ignores anyways. She uh, expects more. The audio like, goes the by these rules. I told you what I, I give do. you, and this is what I have to do. But I get her, I get her any, any time... <laughs> Roses, you know, flowers, just other days. Oh, you know, random say, days so, you when know. your wife I goes don't. like this, listen, I don't want a Christmas present. That's the opposite. That's, yeah, that's, I'm more. just telling you all. <laughs> you young exactly. bucks, like Swanky, Cal's calling them out for trolling. You don't say. Swanky's trolling. Shocker. Shocker. <laughs> His favorite <laughs> network's post-game show must have just ended, so he bounced over here. <laughs> I'm going to go get him. I'm going to go get him, Aldo. You watch. You watch. You watch what I do, Aldo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> job, Swank. There you go. That's great. If your woman girlfriend, fiance, wife says, listen, don't get me a Christmas gift. We spent a lot of money this year. You get the gift anyway. That's my sage advice to you. That's my sage advice. I love it. Anyway, Claudio, victory so, Monday is going to be nice this week. I'm oh off yeah. all week. Oh yeah. Chain's off. So do you have anything you want to say before we end and wrap this show up? No, I'm glad to be back and uh, glad the Bears are playing good. And let's go. Our playoffs start next week. So this we, is it, we, man. We need, to, we need to just come and bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Playoffs. Yes, the playoffs actually start this Sunday against the Packers because it's win and you're in. That's all that matters. We've discussed what we want. I want it to mean something to Green Bay. I want that challenge, and you should too. You don't want the layups. Some fans want to lose for draft picks. Not on this network. Some fans fans want an easy road to the playoffs. Not on this. Mm-hmm. Shane, Claudio, Sam, you don't want it either. We want no fucking way. We want the fucking challenge, and we want to see these yeah. Bears come out victorious. No better way to go into the playoffs beating the Packers. No I mean, better going way into the playoffs beating them. I mean, number one seed. I mean, what the fuck? And get fucking wood chips. I will fucking praise Matt Nagy gonna, yeah. on this network. There's no doubt about it. This you is what him, it's all about. That's what I, I said to Chris Gonzalez earlier, man. You gotta. You. It all comes down week 17, Green Bay. You go beat Green Bay. We'll talk 100 percent because I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear this versus Houston versus Minnesota versus Jacksonville. It's false. It's false hype. Exactly. So we we go, exactly. we beat Green Bay next week, we get in the playoffs, Sammy's happy until he gets his credit card bill from his wife, we're good to go. <laughs> so true. That's what we do. <laughs> Sammy, you got a hey, final guys. thought, and I'm going to isolate on you. I need you to give me your final thought, and then I'm going to ask you to do a station ID. I'm going to put the pressure oh, of course. on Yeah, no, I uh... – you know, guys, first of all, I appreciate all your hard work, all you guys put into this in the back, uh, the back end, the backstage. You know, I know it's a lot to do. And, uh, you know, I, I know you guys love the Bears as much as I do. And uh, we want a 4-2 win. We want a big fucking win. Smash mouth football, old school, kick Green Bay's fucking ass, and let's get it done. I love you guys. Fucking A. Look at that. Now I need you to do this for me, my script. I want you to say your name, where you're from, and you're listening to Bears Hour Live with your guys, Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man, Shane. That should be good enough. That would be All good. right. Sammy the Bull from Chicago. You're listening live, Bears Hour Live with Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man alive, Shane. Okay. There you go. He even One rhyming thing. in there. He's even he's rhyming put, in there. He put a rhyme in there. Like he was rhyming. Yeah. Should I give you a beatbox for this? <laughs> you know what we should do, Phil? We'll have a little bit of fun here before we go off. Okay, Isolate yeah. on Claudio. Okay. Uh-oh. Here we that's, go. That's over. Now Claudio is going to do a station ID. He's not well, done. He do a station ID? <laughs> yeah, he not done. <laughs> Look at his cheeks are red already. Hold on. Let me get, let me get my <laughs> notes. Let me see. <laughs> give, <laughs> give him the countdown, Phil. Oh, give him the countdown. countdown. All right. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. We're good? Can we do one. Give him the countdown, Look Phil. He's got red cheeks. He does. Oh, I've, been drink- I've been drinking a little too much today. So oh, I. the excuse. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Three, yeah, two, ahead. one. 
This is your <laughs> I did not do that. I should have known. Shane, you fucking nice walked straight into that. Shane, I know. Shane was sitting there all day. He was, I'm like, Shane's being nice to me today for some reason. Why the fuck is Shane being so nice to me? I'm it like, this motherfucker's, this motherfucker's buying it hook, line, and sinker. No, I have my fucking finger with it. I'm ready to go. That was great. Good job. Just get the tools now. Go ahead. Oh, you want me to really do one? Yeah, you can do it. I'll stay All right. All right. This is Claudia. This is your boy Claudio the Barber with my boys, Draft Doctor Phil, Shane the Smartest Man, Marsaw, Sammy the Bull, on Bears Hour Live on the Tape Never Lies Network. Let's go. All right, Claudio. Look at this right. guy. There we go. You started from the bottom, now you're here. Look at oh, that. Yeah, I'm seeing sure. comments in the chat. Everybody loves Claudio. <laughs> Sam, you have gotten a lot of fans today where can people find you at sammy the bull 79 yeah sammy the bull 79 on uh on uh, twitter yep that's my uh my twitter feed so go on and jump on there i'm always doing stuff for all sports chicago my bulls my cubs my bears my blackhawks you know so absolutely man follow yeah. sammy i really appreciate you coming on today and i i gotta f- correct my mistakes it's mike tenarelli 10 tenarelli so there you go mike i apologize I don't know where I got the Z. I was thinking pizza. Shane, we got to upload the pizza video that you found this week for keeping it 100. Oh, on yeah. Wednesday yeah, we'll night. put it up there. That's going to be some great it's conversation. coming from a New Yorker, too. So. Coming from a New Yorker. Yeah. Come on. You'll see. That's uh, a little tease for <laughs> Wednesday night, getting the truth out there. Listen, awesome. Shane, do you have your final thought? And then I'll finish with hey, mine. Or- this is the season hasn't went the way we wanted. But you know what? What better way than to go put one on Green Bay week 17 in Soldier Field? Because once you get in, I'm not afraid of fucking anybody in the NFC. I'll just tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. That's just a fact. Fucking A. Mm-hmm. You can say what you want about New Orleans. Chicago lost in New Orleans in overtime. Exactly. Nick Foles at quarterback. Beat the it's a different. Him. Yeah, it's it's a different it's a different mentality once you get in there yeah. this team hey say whatever you can say do whatever you do you have players big time players make big time plays and big time games and now's the fucking time you get into the playoffs anything can happen mm-hmm. look what fucking philly did in 17 nobody mm-hmm. nobody fucking called that gotta get in your playoffs start next week in soldier field versus green bay let's go put one on them so well said so well said i don't know even know how to top that but i'll say this football to me is the greatest game in the world it's not even fucking close i'm sorry claudio it is everything to create boys to men men to champions there is a definition of this game each and every sunday you define who you are the person by the way you play the game on the football field we put the microscope on the chicago bears on this network and we do it like nobody else does that said this football team led by roquan smith has an opportunity to define their character against aaron Rodgers. And the guy's been lethal against you. He loves to play Chicago, was his quote. Your motivation, Mr. Nagy, is to go to 32 and 58 and sit down with them and talk about the game plan this week. That's what you do as a head coach. You talk to your players because you know what? The game is going to be defined by them this weekend. This is it. Your fucking team has an opportunity to change the whole season, right here, right now, against the Packers. I'm ready to suit up now to play them. That's how you got to be when you coach this team. You have to find the motivation in every single player on your team. Find that little thing that makes them tick, that pisses them off. For me, it's a tight end jet sweep on the one. That'll, that pisses me off. That's, that's 
You mention that, I'm going to fucking start getting angry at the bar. You have to do that as a head coach. You have to be the CEO. You got to be out of your playbook. You got to think outside the box when it comes to the rivalry. And so hopefully this team is ready to rock and roll come Sunday. Because you know what? I'm going to have the shits. I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to be pacing. I don't even know how I'm going to feel. Because I want them to win that badly. So don't get it twisted with my fire and passion about this game. I want this team to win. I will be nothing more than happy to congratulate Matt Nagy for turning this ship around. But until you beat that devil, that demon up north, you ain't doing shit. And that is my final thought. You guys have been tremendous. Thank you, Sammy. Fucking You've been a. tremendous today. I love you in the chat. Thank Tune you. in Wednesday night. Keeping it 100. We're going to have some surprises, too. Might have another guest on and some of you fans. Maybe we'll get fucking Joel on. Joel, reach out and DM me. I'll get you on. You fucking go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. Or we'll get it next week after the Packers game. See how Joel's talking. Anyway, love you all. Sammy, you're awesome, man. You guys, thank you. Here. Shane, I appreciate it. Thank you guys a lot. No Dr. problem, man. Claudio, you guys are the fucking best. Guys in the chat, man. thank you. Let's, Let's right. go. Guys in the chat, you better be ready to rock and roll Wednesday night. I don't care what you're doing. Must see TV. The Bachelor, Mikey T, Mikey Tenarelli will be joining us. We're going to have a lot of fun. God bless you. Thank you for watching Bears Hour Live, the best post-Bears game show on the planet. On the Tape Never Lies Network. <laughs>